speak to us. Thank you. Now, I was going to say that my next guest speaks five languages. When she sat down next to me, she saw that and said, actually, it's six. She also has an online following of a staggering eight million people. Xenia Chikumi is a daughter of immigrants, fashion model, then financier, turned internet fashion blogger. Next week, she'll be speaking at the UN in Geneva ahead of International Women's Day. Empowerment through the net is her theme and what it means to be a feminist in 2017. Uh, Xenia, welcome here to the programme. Thank you so much for coming in. I, I mean, about that uh, speech at the UN, you speak about empowering women. What do, you, what do you mean by that through the internet? Thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, well, I mean that girls and women, but not only girls, People in general have internet as a tool right now, as a unifying factor. If you have an interest, a passion, and if you put effort into creating content online, even if you are finding yourself in the most remote place on the or earth and you have an internet connection, you can find like-minded people, people who support you, people who believe in you. And this is a powerful tool if you know how to use it. So. I try to There's plenty of knockers as well, aren't there, in the sense of it's not just people who will support you, there are people that will absolutely. bring you down. You talk about the internet being absolutely pivotal in combating prejudice. In what way? You need to learn how to use this tool, and uh, I've done it by making mistakes and trying and pioneering or sometimes in certain areas. And I want to uh, give my experience to other people, tell about it, speak about it in my speeches, and tell them how to use it, how to work online, what not to do, how to avoid bullies or how to ignore them actually and how to take the best out of it to create uh, your own path. It's see, about self-determination. We're seeing some of those speeches on the screen and I'll come back to that in a moment but your journey that I mentioned there in the introduction it is an extraordinary thing you know a daughter of immigrants uh, from Russia ending up in Switzerland then just multiple reincarnations of yourself <laughs> before you are what you are just now. I mean, it's an extraordinary journey. I don't want to make it all about myself, but it wasn't easy. It was never easy. There's ups and downs and, and bumps on the road. And I, I've had, you know, successes and not successes. And I've done many things. I've tried many things. That's important, I think. I've tried finance. I studied economics, but I also was always in the showbiz area. And finally, with the Internet, I found my own path. Uh, there may be people watching this, watching you, thinking, wow, you speak six languages, you're highly educated, you have model looks, you're now followed by eight million people. I mean, it's easy for you to say you can be what any, uh, whatever you want. Well, I was saying, to, before starting my journey online, I had a problem with a book deal that did not come through and I was lying on my mom's sofa crying for three months and eating and doing nothing really and that's how through this period of depression and crisis I, I actually realized what I had to do and it was absolutely risky because it was a new journey a new path I had to take a step back because instead of being shot by professional photographers and being on covers I would have you know took a selfie with my phone and showed my shoe. So it was a big risk and a big leap of fate that I took, but it was worth it. So I think taking risks in this case, and you know, I wouldn't say that everything was easy at all. It's nev it but never, it never is. But those features where you say you can be whatever you want to be. And you can. You dream, and you, you need can. to open that box up again, that you had dreams as a child, and you can actually fulfill fill them. Uh, I mean, is, is that the real world I truly for, for, for most people? Fully truly believe it. I didn't have it easy. My parents don't come from a wealthy background. Uh, my parents separated when I was 12. I had to survive with my mom. I didn't have it easy at all. I started working as a bartender when I was 18. And then I think without hard work in general, for anyone is not easy. You need to put the work in. But you also have to have belief. And I think by saying it to people, by saying to people, you can do it, just do this, this and that. Obviously, you need to give them a certain set of tools. And I try to do that. I try to do that by example, but I also try to tell them my story. I love the phrase, fear is fuel, that you use. I mean, I mentioned in the introduction, feminism in 2017. What do you think that means? It's post-feminism. I think a woman should be definitely feminine, should be whatever she wants. She doesn't have to be or look or speak like a man. She can dress however she likes, she can be 
elegant. She can put high heels and a skirt and be respected for that. It's interesting you say that because you've been criticised, haven't you, by from some of the fashion shoots and what you wear and time. all of that. All the time, but I'm happy about it. I actually take this criticism, I take it in and I speak about it. And it, I think it's, there you go, another fuel for me to speak about my situations and say, okay, why don't they want me to wear a skirt and speak about feminism? Why don't they want me to look cute and speak about pre feminism? Don't feel the tension in, in that basic premise, though. Uh, that's the whole point. Uh, in your speeches, you also talk about uh, competition between women. Yes. Do you think that, that, that women sometimes are not as supportive of each other as I think perhaps they should be? Sadly, it still exists. And uh, sadly, sometimes women are envious of each other and they try to bring each other down. In my industry, in fashion, it happens a lot. And I also have a lot of colleagues and girlfriends who sometimes get my jobs, work with the brand I dream of working with, and I don't get that job. And obviously, I will feel envy. I do. But I think there is a way of feeling this envy and turn it into admiration and inspiration. I ins aspire to be like my girlfriends. I think that's great for you. I will write you a great comment. I will support your campaign. I will support what you're doing because next time it's going to be me. We're nearly, nearly out of time. A final question. You know, you're a daughter of an immigrant. You've watched the last 12 months, the migrant crisis in Europe, Trump's travel ban. What do you make of the, the backdrop of hostility for, for migrants, for immigrants? I am Swiss, Italian and Russian. It's very difficult to explain who I am because there's a lot of cultures within me and my following is also extremely international. So I, in my little sphere, always try to uh, create a certain cohesion and unity within my community. I always say, guys, look, we're here all together. We're speaking about the same thing. In my live videos, in my, in my social media, I try to give a love message. That's all I can do. Well, that's all the time we have. Zinia, thank you so thank much you for so much. coming in and talking to us. Thank you for watching. Hope you can join us at the same time next time. For now, bye-bye.